Welcome back. In this devlog, I'll be tackling buoyancy simulation and give you guys the references and solutions I obtained. Today, I focused on learning how to give height to my water shader by modifying the Y position of each vertice by the sine of X. I also give an amplitude property for a higher or lower curvature and a wavelength property for the length of the wave. Then, I modified the wavelength to move throughout time and with a given speed parameter. Good morning! Today I woke up around 6am, went to the gym, and now around 9.45am I'll work with implementing a great advice I was given regarding the visual consistency of the skybox and the beach. A reddit user gave me some reference images of a game containing a similar style to the game I'm making. This was definitely a great reference and today I'll be adding a new skybox using these images as reference. Inspired by the reference image I was given, I started designing a cloud, frequently swapping between Aspride and Unity to measure how well it fits with the scene and overall visual theme. This was the final result. It still feels like you're in a cube, but I'll eventually optimize it. A feature that can later be added though is a sunset by changing the tint color of the skybox bright and some other values as well. After that, around 12.30, I got hungry and decided to make myself some pasta carbonara because it's the only good dish I know how to make. Good morning, y'all. I woke up late today, man. Not happy about that. Anyway, I've been watching this dude named Ziba Scott. Crazy name. He was in the 2015 Unite event and he talked about buoyancy math. So that'll be useful for me since today I start with buoyancy. So first thing I did is get a cube and give it a rigid body component. The rigid body component gives all the base features of a physics oriented object. A problem I noticed is that the rigid body was considering our ocean mesh to be a solid object. So it stopped in the water after falling. Then I realized that it was because the water mesh had a mesh collider, which meant it would treat it as a collision. To fix this, I changed it to just be a trigger and swapped the mesh collider with a box collider so that it's more accurate, I think. So now it doesn't collide with the water, but there will be a trigger that informs us if it passes through the water. I started coding a buoyant object by stating that if the object collides with some trigger and that trigger is water, then give the object an upwards force. Eventually realizing that this would only occur once since the force would apply only with on trigger enter. Now, for a buoyant object to be constantly floating, aka going up and down, we need the trigger to be constantly giving the object the upwards force, and gravity will give it the downwards force, giving the idea of up and down buoyancy. So I changed the method so that it triggers every time the object is inside the water. So. Today we tackle another problem of buoyancy, that is that if we throw this cube to the water with a horizontal trajectory, we soon realize that the water doesn't give any sort of contrasting force that would slowly but surely stop the cube from moving horizontally. This is because the buoyancy force we're applying is just upwards. If we see here, the red signifies the current direction and velocity of the rigid body. How we solve the problem of having the rigid body run around horizontally is to apply a contrasting force to the velocity in which the object arrives with. So the buoyancy should remain upwards, but the force I speak about that relates to decrementing the horizontal trajectory speed is called drag. We combine these two in order to give viscosity to the water and buoyancy to the object. So in summary, the drag would have an opposite force to the object's velocity. Then, I had too much curiosity as to how this buoyancy simulation would look with a pirate ship, so I went to Sketchfab and downloaded a test model from Jacob Baldwin, or Jacob Baldwin. I gave it the box collider, set up its values, and this is how it looked. Part of the buoyancy talk I studied tackled the problem that, say, if a plank is shifted diagonally, then the buoyant force is exerted from the center of the plank. 
leaving one side above the water and another one below, and this is unnatural. So the way to tackle this problem is with surface points. Depending on the point of an object that is in the water, we exert a force to that point, which would in theory balance the whole plank. <laughs> I managed a strategy which is to first map out all 8 vertices of the box collider. Then we find the lowest for all vertices and that's the one we want to give a buoyant force. I realized that the math only works if the object is scaled in 1x1x1. One by one by one. So I made each vertice match the scale of the box collider and the local scale. After setting up a new buoyant force relative to the lowest vertice, I realized that although now the plank is more balanced, adding force only in the lowest vertice generates a repetitive swirling pattern. Now I believe part of the solution is to find the average point between the center of mass and the lowest point. Then apply the buoyant force there, which would rebalance the mesh. <laughs> now, if we apply the buoyant force at the lowest average position at all times, we'd still get the repetitive pattern. So we should only use the lowest average position if the mesh is unbalanced, else just apply buoyancy in the center of mass. So my question now is, how do I determine if the mesh is unbalanced? I realized that basing the lowest average to be relative to the center of mass can make the point not be completely centered. So I did a terrible, and I mean terrible way to fix it, which is to loop twice through all vertices and find the lowest vertice and the second lowest vertice. Then base the average based on the two lowest vertices. I'll 100% I'll fix these four loops. Don't even like, don't think of me as a lowly specimen now. To determine if the mesh was unbalanced, I checked the distance between the lowest average position and the center of mass. If this distance was not that long apart, then it's relatively balanced. If not, then apply the buoyancy force at the lowest average point to rebalance the plank. I also had to stop the angular velocity from unbalancing the plank again. With all this, here is the current result of my buoyancy script. Now, with this buoyancy script, I'll be able to work on the next step, which is a ship sailing system. So I'll meet you guys there. Until next time, I'm signing out.